What makes the world go round? I love the idea of X-ray specs being made to order to show you whatever you want to see to make the invisible visible. So if we had a pair of X-ray specs to show us what makes the world go round, what would we see? Perhaps money? But I'm not talking about that today. Perhaps we might expect to see love. But I'm not talking about that today. I'm talking about something else. The stuff which allows us to move, to make sound, to change the world around us. The stuff that is the force of life. I'm talking about power. Look, put these specks on and look at your hand. Here's mine. We can imagine what the bones might look like from all the x-rays we've seen. But can you imagine what the life force looks like? It might look like this. The pattern of vessels carrying oxygen and nutrients to the cells, enabling this hand to live. If we now look around, we'd see all living things glow with this force in their fabric and in their metabolisms. The trees pulling sap off from the ground, the birds and insects buzzing. We see the force that animates Darwin's tangled bank. And now onto the scene runs humankind, us, eating those plants and animals to build and power our muscles, and at our centres, powering the ever-beating heart and the ever-sparking mind. And what about the artefacts and machines of civilization? Our buildings, vehicles and growing infrastructure information processing would grow brightest of all, simply because the quantum of the force they employ is much larger. OK, you say, he's talking about energy, but I did that in physics, right? I say no, I'm talking about power. Energy is abstract, it's coal and electrons. But power is what we feel in an accelerating car, it's the force of change. The truth is they're really different aspects of the same thing, of course, and here's how. Power is the flow, and energy is the quantity. Simple. For example, you know we're supposed to eat about two and a half to 3,000 calories per day, right? Well, that's a measure of energy, but it can also be understood as a rate of flow. But what is power? We know it comes in multiple different forms and is constantly changing between them. I like to think of it as being a great river delta, which we would see flowing through all things. It's a complex flow with many different streams, eddies and lagoons. At the initial source of this river is the beginning of the universe, the Big Bang, and at its end is the inevitable heat death of the universe. Those lagoons are matter somewhere energy has been locked up for a while, in a rock, or a forest, or a person. What makes this flow is what physics calls the universal tendency to greater entropy, the tendency for things to fall apart, to break down, to move from order to disorder. Consider a sand castle that we build on a beach. As the wind carries its particles away one by one, depositing them further up the beach, it is perfectly possible that it will build a sandcastle again. But it is vanishingly unlikely, of course, because there are trillions of ways to arrange those sand grains, only a few of which look anything like a castle. So the increase of disorder is relentless, and the arrow of time points in one direction only. But how can this be what makes things work? Surely by definition it is what makes things unwork. Like a waterfall shattering an organised flow into a million pieces of flying spray. This is the key miracle because it is precisely this force which life uses to move in exactly the opposite direction, to build order out of chaos. And our civilization performs the same trick. Imagining the ability to see power, as I start doing on this channel, provides a new way to approach our history as well as physics and engineering, and perhaps even economics.